Today's world is a network of data and signals. The gap between vision and reality is closing. A thirst for knowledge and the search for new frontiers are the driving force behind innovation. We develop and produce top quality, durable products that enable progress. Cultures and markets may differ, but people and technology bring us closer together. The essence of our products, technology for people who are building tomorrow's world. Technology that makes work and life easier. Good afternoon. I welcome all the viewers of ELA Times for an in conversation with Benoit, CEO and President for Art5 France. We are here to discuss about the path-breaking technology that is SAR measurements and about the new SAR robot that Art5 has created. And Benoit will take us through about a short description about how this works and details about it. So, are we good to go? Well, first of all, I heard SAR robot. I think. Uh I should, I should notice this term and, and take it. Actually, the SAR technique we have developed doesn't need a robot anymore. Mm -hmm. So SAR measurement, for those of you who are looking at this video, maybe it's good to explain that it is a measure, SAR, is a measure of how much power is dissipated in the human tissues while a user of a mobile phone or laptop or wireless device is communicating and wearing the device in close proximity to his head or body. In many countries, it is really a key quantity because wireless manufacturers, before putting their products on the market, they need to demonstrate compliance with exposure limits, and this compliance ensures the health and safety of the users. For many years, the uh, SAR measurement have been taken, have been done with robot systems which would move a probe inside a mannequin that would represent the head or the body of a person. Those mannequins are standardized. The thing is that the mobile technologies have developed quite impressively in the past 15 years, let's say. And nowadays, the number of tests to do for a smartphone, for example, is huge. It may take like easily four weeks, three shifts from a test lab to do all the testing. So it's becoming a big burden over the industry, which is why in 2012, we, after four years of development, we released a new technology that would accelerate this type of measurement quite much. And the main idea was actually to remove the use of the robot and the mechanical movement in order to speed up the measurement. And to do so, we did a simple thing. Instead of having one probe moved by a robot, we put hundreds of probes that are swept electronically. Of course, there were challenges in implementing such a complex technology to keep the same accuracy. And for taking on these challenges, we had to develop a completely new technology of probes, also a new technology of tissue simulating materials, so biological model. And in the end, we also had to develop completely new algorithms to calculate the energy inside the mannequins. And those things are covered by our patents and have become quite popular in the past years because we have started to sell many of these systems either to manufacturers or test labs or government. Well, what I would like to explain first is uh, this system is, in the end, pretty simple. We have the mannequins, which are standardized. So this, a head mannequin, a flat mannequin for the body. Those are defined by standards. Inside those mannequins, we have biological tissue models. So these are fluids, which mimic the dielectric properties of the head or the body. And 
Embedded inside those fluids, we put our probe arrays, which are radio frequency probes that are capable to capture the electric field over a surface, two components. And after that, the rest of the system is mostly a vector signal analyzer. So we are capable of doing time domain acquisition of the radio frequency voltages, and we relate those voltages to the electric field that's inside the mannequin. After we assess the field over this measurement surface, then that's where it gets a little more complex, that we apply algorithms which are based on physics, we call near field transformation, which allow to calculate the SAR distribution in the whole volume. And this is all done in one big box system. All the calculations are done in the system, and then we calculate the 1 gram and 10 gram SAR average, which are the quantities of relevant for authorities, and we communicate that through Ethernet to the computer. All of this operation, when you launch a test, takes about 5 seconds, as opposed to 20 to 50 minutes, what it used to take with robot system. The fact that uh, users are more and more interested in using uh, data-heavy type of applications forced the mobile wireless device manufacturers to develop very complex device, integrating many transmission technologies, and yeah, offering more and more options to communicate and deliver data. And with this, it means that basically it has increased a lot the needs for testing. So this is why definitely the impact of this wireless technology evolution is direct on the testing equipment also uh, technologies and we have as testing equipment manufacturers to develop equipment that can deliver more rapidly the test results because for sure there are many more to test, many more conditions to test nowadays. Also the variety of products is large Manufacturers are pushed to develop maybe specific products for each different applications, wearables on top of the smartphones, products for gaming. So many possible test conditions, which in the end turn into many more tests and more need for test equipment. And also need for more automation, which also is why, I mean, in our case, now we are here at Rodenschwarz India together for speaking about this technology, we chose Rodenschwarz India as a partner also because Rodenschwarz India and Rodenschwarz in general has this culture of uh, test automation and what we do with our system is to prepare for this big evolution of the wireless market and provide together with Rodenschwarz more and more automated solutions. It has a very smooth integration with R and S S, a base station, as you mentioned. Yes. So, uh, from technical perspective, was it difficult getting this integration in, or you had to work hard towards it? I mean, how has been the functioning of R five with Rodinch was in completing this technology? Well, it has been actually pretty smooth. Um, we have a long history with Rodinch farts, even uh, when uh, I was not working for my own company. I was working for a mobile phone manufacturer called Sagem, maybe you remember. We already interacted quite a lot with Rodin Schwarz and we were familiar with their uh, products and uh, programming their products as well. So when I left Sagem, I left with someone from my former team that actually was a special specialist in programming Rodin Schwarz equipment. So it, it was really smooth to integrate our system with Rodin Schwarz product. And also we received very good support from uh, Rodin Schwarz France, as we are based near Paris. Yeah, so that was smooth. Uh, of course, when we talked about how smooth it's been, as you mentioned, would you also like to point out some challenges 
that you still have in mind. Of course, when we have the product ready, we do not want to, you know, look at the challenges that we face. But still, uh, you know, in developing a path-breaking technology like this, would you like to point out that major challenges that you actually face? Well, yeah, that's, well, I think it's a fair question, and i like to answer that. You know, I often say that back in 2010 when I launched Artfy with my associate, if I would have known all the challenges that we would be about to face, I would probably not have done it. So it needs a bit of uh, craziness to start a company, especially when you're doing hardware equipment. Uh, definitely the biggest challenge we faced was moving from a scientific idea to a real product that you can produce repeatedly, and especially when you have nearly a thousand of sensor per product. In one system like Artman, you have nearly 200 electronic RF electronic boards. I was really, really far in the beginning to imagine how difficult it would be to produce such a system. And it took us really four years to get to something that was stable. So that was a major challenge. Since we know that uh, the challenges that you faced, we would love to hear, I mean, how has the response been? I'm, I'm pretty sure you have uh, people using the system by now. So how has been the testimony or the response towards the system? Initially, there was another, ch another challenge that I think uh, many people from the industry did not really believe that this technology was possible. That moving from hours and hours of testing to something that just lasts a few seconds. I think people were just thinking, these guys are, are kidding us. They, yeah. But after we also initiated a standard effort at the IEC and customers started to use the machine, then they understood that this was really going in the direction of the future of compliance testing. And the product, after one year of the introduction, which was a difficult year, then end of 2013, we started to sell it and the feedback from customers was very good. So. 2014 was an even better year and 2015 was really good and we are continuing in this direction. Definitely mobile manufacturers have bought it and they are happy with it. Also major test service companies, some governments also already have it. It took us some time but definitely uh, now the product has been well acknowledged by the, the wireless community. So it's a good to hear about satisfied clientele who is actually happy using the products and I mean we hear a lot of things you know uh, gathering data is one of the things that is associated with the system so and we see more and more technology getting connected to internet so uh, do you have a say uh, on getting this and how to store the data and how well it is connected to the internet or maybe you know to the cloud infrastructure of how we can process the data. Of course, we know that it has a quick turnaround time better than anyone else. Um, maybe the frequency range that you talked about is way better than any other equipment in the market. And also, I would just like to know about the compatibility of things, because what I'm pointing towards is Internet of Things. That's another revolution that's brewing up. So would you like to I mean, point out that? There are actually multiple points in your question, and I think they are very uh, interested interesting points I was reading an article on uh, big data recently and uh, the title of the article was uh, let's say big data without I don't remember exactly the wording but without ways to let's say uh, look into them are just a big trash dump of data somehow we are making more and more data from systems with sensors like we could have with this one we don't exploit them then the learning process is slow and everything, yes. This device is actually a connected device because it communicates through the Ethernet and it can be used to basically, I mean, you could have many of this system collecting a lot of data and probably from this, we could understand more about what are the successful antenna designs for mobile phones, for example. How to design a good mobile phone that would have good radiation performances and low SAR, for example. Well, if we were capable of collecting all data from these systems of manufacturers measuring and measuring so many different types of phones and antennas, probably we would get a lot in antenna design insight. Problem we face here, of course, security issues. That's 
again a problem of the big data. Not so many people are willing to share their data. But I'm quite sure there is something to do in this direction, that uh, the more we collect measurement, the more we can learn from them and maybe we can optimize our design approaches. Now talking about compatibility and Internet of Things, definitely these kind of approaches can also be applied to measure Internet of Things or connected objects. However, it clearly cannot address all topics because somehow you see we have fixed types of mannequins and nowadays there are so many usages appearing. Like you can mount your, your mobile phone just in front of your eyes to have a gaming device. Clearly, unfortunately for me, I cannot really test this kind of exposure condition with my system. And actually, even at the standard committee level, we still have not treated all of these new usages. We still need to come up with standard conditions to test them. And it's an everyday challenge. Who knows what will be the next usage in the trend? Uh, Benoit, thank you for all the wonderful insights that you gave about the product, the challenges that you faced, and finally, when we have something like this in the market. That would be all from my end, but I would like you to add something if you want to finish it off. Well, thanks a lot. I think what I want to add is just to thank you for uh, this very nice time we had together. I really enjoyed your questions. And also, I want to thank uh, Rodin Schwartz India for uh, having hosted this interview and I'm very glad that I had a chance to be in India here for the second time. I have pretty much enjoyed the Indian culture. So far it has been mostly for business but I hope next time I have time to take good vacation and discover your heritage here. Thank you, thank you again. Today's world is a network of data and signals. The gap between vision and reality is closing. A thirst for knowledge and the search for new frontiers are the driving force behind innovation. We develop and produce top quality, durable products that enable progress. Cultures and markets may differ, but people and technology bring us closer together. The essence of our products, technology for people who are building tomorrow's world, technology that makes work and life easier.